America. These are the spoils that everybody is playing for. This is it. These are the spoils. The world is changing. All of the power is going to change. I'm sorry, but America is going to change. The question is, will she survive? The answer is yes, if we pay attention. So who is playing? Who is sitting at the table and saying, I'm putting more chips on the table? Who is actually playing? I contend the United States is not playing. The United States is being played. These are the players at the table, the real serious players. Everybody else is a clown. You have George Soros, you have Russia, China, and Islam. These are the players of the table. And if you look at each of these players, you will see they all have cards that they are holding. And you would say, if you just looked at their cards, who's going to win? Well, Soros, he is the ultimate capitalist. He has made billions of dollars. And he wants to slam the door shut on others. Uh, now, I don't know if he even cares what the system is now. He just wants his own system, this open society thing. He has called for a new world order for years. Listen. You really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, uh, world order, financial world order. It only gets more greedy as you get closer to Soros. This is a guy who's known as the man who broke the Bank of England. He's brought down economies before. The game George Soros is playing is a game where he will financially win. Soros and his allies, his allies, the allies in the government, and not just this government. He has allies in the labor unions. He has allies everywhere. Now, not the government and labor unions because he loves America and Democratic presidents or he supports the little guy in labor disputes, but because he believes it, they're cards that he needs to hold to win this pie, the accomplishment of his goal, the nouveau d'ordre. Now, how do I know that? From his own words. He has said he doesn't love the United States. He said that the United States is the biggest obstacle to the open society, which is a form of government that he envisions. Quote, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States. So why would he want to hold these cards? Again, if you don't hold them, someone else is. Clear enough for you? Not a fan, not a patriot. He's a guy who wants fundamental transformation of America. Now, I don't believe the United States is the main obstacle to a stable and just world order. Do you? This man's playing for control of this. But is anyone reporting or does anybody care? I believe we have always been the great last hope for the world. And we still are. Okay. He also has banking. He has the corporations through the Tides Foundation and things like that. He has the media. Hello, Fareed. Are you watching? Are you busy on the phone with Obama or Soros? The media. He has the radicals. He has communists who are, are, are joining with all of these groups. This man's a capitalist. Why would he have radicals? Why? Fuel. He has the churches. He's godless. Why is he funding so many church activities? The man is an atheist. Doesn't make sense unless you understand he's playing for the world. Next player at the table is Russia. You have, with Russia, they've got a lot. Most Americans completely dismiss them as a nation that we needn't concern ourselves anymore. It's a non-threat. But Russia is using communist countries like Venezuela. They are also playing a wicked game, co-opting the Middle East. They know if the control of oil, if you control oil in Europe, in Europe, you got Europe. That's why they are building pipelines all through Europe. Look who's been building alliances with Europe. Uh, I mean, with uh, Russia. It's Turkey. Last year, the two agreed to build the first Turkey nu nuclear plant, a project worth $20 billion. We can't build one here, but Turkey can? Russia is building one. Russia is, is the biggest trading partner in Iran. They're helping Iran build one. We can't build one, but Iran is safe to have a nuclear power plant. 
Also, Russia and Venezuela. Last year, the two countries promised to strengthen their bilateral, bilateral ties. Russian even says the communist country has acted like a real friend. Aren't they? Didn't we just announce on this program last week that they're also building missile platforms in Venezuela? Russia and Pakistan. Earlier this month, the president of Russia and Pakistan got together, had a little chat about working together on energy products, like building a pipeline and exploring for gas. Russia and Libya. Russian's foreign minister just met with the rebel leaders. They are even strengthening ties with China. That's a country they hate each other. They've never been friendly. China pledged to be a key partner in Russia's plan to build up its Far East region, which is loaded with natural resources. Now let's take a look at China, shall we? China is the obvious winner here. They have plenty of money, plenty of people. They have tech, they have resources. The military is about to take over. Think of this, they have 1.4 billion people in China alone. We have 310 million. India has 1.2 billion. Got it? China is just investing in, uh, rose, in, in gold. It, it, they have invested, they're buying, what is it? 10,000 tons of gold uh, here in the next year. It's crazy what they're doing. They've got the resources. These guys, there are three players at the table here that have a lot in common. They're playing with fire. They're playing with radicals, radicals, radicals. These guys do not like an unstable world. They don't like it. They're slower, more methodical. They don't want to upset the apple cart because they have 1.4 billion people. That thing becomes unstable. It's chaos in China. So they don't like an unstable world. Neither does Soros in the end. Soros has got to get rid of these people. He'll get rid of these people. He'll get rid of these people really in the end because anything, anything that is too radical, that has too many thugs, he's a businessman. A business. It's just business. It's not personal. When he's done, he's done. But he's playing with fire because he's also tied himself through these radicals down here. And this is the last one sitting at the table. Radicalized Islam. Islam, as it's done in the Middle East, they have the oil, but they also have something else that is a trump card, and that is God. I should, I should make that. They have faith. They have faith on their side. They believe in something. George Soros, all of his minions, all of his minions, they only believe in money. Faith in God trumps money every time. And everybody that he has to rule, he rules over. Are you for George Soros' plan? Do you even know what his plan is? How about Russia? Russia, radicals, they have to, both of them in the end, have to have a thugocracy. China is a thugocracy. And Islam, the ultimate. Chop your head off in the Middle East if you disagree. It's not the same Islam here, gang. Who gets control? Who gets control? They're all playing for the same world. But you notice I didn't say the United States is sitting at the table. We are a card. We're a card. We're not a player. If you don't think this has happened before, it has happened before. How did the most powerful naval force in the world for nearly two centuries just disappear? Remember when we started, we had to build new uh, ships for England. How's that possible? On the Navy, on, on the Empire where the sun never set, how's it possible? Because we were this player at 1918. That was us. We had the money, and then we told people what to do. Islam, no matter what anybody else says, Islam, in the end, is the winner because faith trumps all of these things. But there is hope. There's a way to beat it next.